So I had a friend recently ask me, hey, what would be a good pair of headphones that I could use to make beats and mix my tracks on? And I said, well, what do you currently have? And he said, I have, I have AirPods. And I said, why not just use those? He was a bit taken aback by this and he asked me, uh, you sure they're gonna have the quality needed for making music with? I explained to him that I use AirPods all the time to work on music and some of the tracks that I have gotten put on universal production music that I've done have uh, been worked on with AirPods and I do a ton of client work with AirPods as well. So this conversation I had gave me the idea for this video because I realized that there's a bigger topic at play here, a bigger conversation that we need to have around creating music. So. Let me give you three reasons why I make music on AirPods. These are my AirPod Pros. I bought these in August of 2021, and the left one has water damage, and the noise cancellation barely works because of that, but other than that, these things sound great, and I use them all the time. So the number one reason I make music on AirPods is because I know them better than anything else. Due to their convenience, I have them with me all the time. Yes, I do have Sennheiser HD 600s. Yes, I do have KRK Rockets. You know, those are good, but I'm not listening to them all the time. What I'm doing more of is I'm walking the dog. I'm going to the gym. I am laying in bed at night. I'm always using AirPods for these things. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm using AirPods. I know these headphones so well because of that. They're always in my ears. Knowing your headphones and your speakers that you use is crucial to the results that you get out of your music, the results that you get out of the choices you make in your DAW. The thing that you listen to all the time becomes the reference point and the baseline from which you make all of your decisions on your music. That's the exact reason why if you're listening in one pair of headphones and you try out somebody else's headphones, they sound completely different because you're not listening to those kind of headphones all the time. The construction of them, the padding on them, the drivers in them, these are all different characteristics that make up that pair of headphones. I'd like to compare it to muscle memory. So when I'm in the kitchen and I'm chopping vegetables, there's a certain knife I like to use for that. I use it all the time for that. Well, if that is sitting in the sink and it needs to be washed, sometimes I'll go ahead and grab another knife out of convenience, but I end up taking way longer and it's much slower for me to get through the same process because I just don't have that same kind of reference point. I'm not as quick with it. I don't have the same grip on the knife and it's just a different experience that I kind of need to adapt to. It's the same thing with your listening source. Podcasts, casual music listening, YouTube videos that I'm watching, I'm all using AirPods for this. So naturally I'd want to take my music and put it in that same kind of environment to see where it's sitting alongside all of the other stuff that I listen to with these headphones. Knowing your listening source is so crucial to your music because you could go ahead and buy the most expensive pair of headphones out there but it's not going to matter. It's not going to do anything for your music unless you know it really really well. You need to understand how the headphones you're using represents the music that you play through it. The second reason, translation is way more important than any one source. If it sounds great on your brand new pair of headphones and it sounds great on your brand new pair of studio monitors, but when you go out to the car and you give it a listen and it sounds terrible, what does it matter? If you're trying to make some music and you're trying to put it out into the world, you're not gonna know what people are gonna be listening to the music on. They're probably gonna be listening to it on their phone, on their AirPods, on their earbuds from Dollar General, People listen to music on all sorts of systems, all sorts of speakers, all sorts of headphones, and you need to try to make the music sound the best between all of those things. There's a reason beautiful, expensive studios have a pair of Oratones sitting at the desk. They intentionally sound mid, literally. They only represent the mid frequencies. They have very little highs and very little lows. And the theory is, if you can make it sound good on there, you'll make it sound good on everything else. By the way, one way to do this really simply in your DAW is just to load up an EQ on the master bus and put a low cut on 500 hertz and a high cut on 5K. Does it sound good with that EQ on there? Can you hear everything in it? Does it sound cluttered? Use that as a reference source because a lot of cheap speakers out there only produce those mid-range frequencies. I will never say that these are audiophile grade headphones, but who cares? If I can make something sound good with them, that's all that matters. Yes, I know that the frequency response of these earbuds has some peaks and some dips when you look at it on a chart online. But the reality is, so does a lot of high-end gear as well. A lot of audio equipment isn't really as flat as the marketing says it is. And the third reason that I produce music on AirPods is, I'm not trying to be a gearhead anymore. 
I've spent way too much time up to this point in my music journey, my music uh, profession as a gearhead. I'm trying to get over that because I spent too much time focusing on buying new gear instead of learning what I already had because it's just easier. The, the simple fact is it's easier to just buy new gear, either trash talk it or praise it and post pictures on Reddit or Facebook or something like that. But in reality, I'm trying to get over that and I'm trying to just take that time and focus on actually making something with the stuff that I have instead of just talking about it. I think as artists, producers, composers, whatever you consider yourself, we're inundated with product marketing and we feel that we have to buy something to feel like we're into the music, that we have a music career. And for us to say, oh yeah, I make music, I do it professionally, see, I have this piece of gear. We see the discussions online, we see people posting their new toys, and I'm just really tired of all that. I'm trying to just work on the music. Yes, there are new things coming out that I'm incredibly excited about, for sure, but I'm trying not to let it rule the music that I'm making. Buying a new pair of headphones will not suddenly make you better at your music. What will is spending time actually using and understanding the things that you have and comparing your work to what is already out there. So I have three things you could do instead of buying new headphones. The first is EQ training. There are multiple resources for this out there. I believe one is called Sound Gym or something. There's a lot of that kind of stuff out there. Just look it up and it's awesome. It really teaches you how to listen for certain frequencies and what it does when you boost them and cut them. Number two, further learn and understand what you already have. Take those things that you have at your disposal, whether it be different types of headphones or your different speaker systems you might have access to, such as a car for instance. Listen to the music you're trying to create on those different systems. What are the different characteristics that you notice between them? The more you understand this, the better decisions you will end up making in the mixing process. Also, listen to the songs that inspire you. Compare them against the music that you're trying to make out there. Take a track that you like and put it in your DAW and sweep through the song with an EQ and see what sticks out. See what sticks out when you cut out all the highs. How does the bass sit in the mix compared to the track that you're working on? This kind of studying really helps you to understand the characteristics that are in the music that you enjoy listening to and helps you to break it down piece by piece. I'll cite Ben Jordan's video here about how brands manipulate you to be loyal and say that I think we need to try stepping away from the discussion boards and the infographics on Instagram and just try to understand the, the stuff that we already have and use it better, learn it better and make some awesome music with it. I'll put my caveat here and say that I understand that there's a certain baseline equipment that we have to have as musicians. but. I'm getting pretty far with just this, and I think you can too. It's a different day and it's outside. Let me get ahead of any criticism of this video and say that, number one, I don't only use AirPods to check my mix and to mix music on. I am a big proponent of checking my mix a bunch of a whole different host of sources, like I said earlier in the video. So I never rely on just one thing. I also listen to laptop speakers, monitors, and my Sennheisers as well but before I finally hit export on something. But the purpose of this video is to say that you shouldn't have to rely on outside external assurance on the work that you're creating. I know that's really hard to do with all the discussion online and the social media and the videos that we see of people using a particular piece of gear. We just want that because we feel like if we get that piece of gear and we implement that in our workflow, we're gonna immediately crack the code, but that's not the case. And I've only learned that after saving up so much money time and time again, year over year, buying new gear, thinking that it's gonna do the thing that I want it to do, thinking it's gonna make me the productive musician that I wanna call myself. I'll cite a business book that I read here called Fish Tales, and this book is all about managing teams and keeping momentum going when you're trying to implement new policies in your workforce. Sounds like a weird example, but it works for your music as well. The key line from this book is, external energy has to be replaced by internal energy. No matter how many products you buy, that is not going to give you the internal drive and motivation to get a piece of work done. Yes, those things can jumpstart your creativity, give you a shot in the arm, and th make you think of new ways of doing things, but it has to be your internal energy that is wanting to get that piece of work done. By saying that, I mean that your music and the work that you create is more than just the sum of all the products you own. Someone whose work I'm really intrigued by lately is Fred again, who largely uses Apple earbuds to record and to uh, make music with. And that just goes to show that you don't need to have a 
particular pair of headphones to be making good music. Focus on the work that you're creating instead of the product that you're using to do so. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. What is your equivalent to the AirPods scenario? Do you have a piece of gear that you just feel like, who cares? This is what I use and that's fine. Do you have an equivalent to that? Do you use Raycons over AirPods or something like that? Um, I'd love to hear your discussion in the comments about that sort of thing. And, and I'd love to hear about any discussion in the comments you have about making music and just focusing on that instead of all of the product marketing that's out there. If you've never seen my channel before, my name is Dan and I run One Channel Productions where I specialize in electronic music production for solo artists. If you need some production on your music, I'd love to work on it for you and I might use some AirPods while doing so. Go check out my website at onechannelproductions.com and go listen to my work where some of it I did do on AirPods. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear anything you have to say in the comments. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a great day.